My criteria for these packs was to have a bag with the largest dimensions possible while still being small enough to fit as a personal item on most budget airlines. I wanted features that would make it a good travel backpack, like a large clamshell or panel style opening that gives you access to a large main compartment, as well as comfortable backpack straps for carrying heavier loads and a good exterior organization so you can access small gear and electronics on the go. I'll show you all the features of these bags in this video, and in a separate video, I'll pack all these bags with the same gear to compare the capacity. The packs that I chose for this review are the Air Travel Pack 2 Small, Cabin Zero Military 28, Cotopaxi Alpa 28, Patagonia Trace 25, and the Evergood CPL 24. There's no standard size for personal items on airlines. It depends on the carrier, what kind of planes they're flying, and how much they want to squeeze you for baggage fees. The criteria that I used is common on American budget airlines like American, Spirit, Frontier, and Southwest. It's 18 inches long by 14 by eight inches wide. I actually made this little wooden box here so I could test these bags out and make sure that they're all gonna fit. However, most of these packs are not gonna fit on the more restrictive dimensions of airlines like Norwegian or Ryanair. Some of the listed dimensions in these bags are longer than the box. For example, this Cotopaxi Alpa is 19 inches long. It's gonna be tight fitting in there, but this bag is soft, so as long as you don't overpack it, it should fit. Instead of just listing off the dimensions, I'll put them in the description below, but as a quick overview, all of these packs are between 24 and 28 liters capacity. They're all a panel opening style design, except for the Alpa here, which is a clamshell. The Evergood CPL and the Patagonia Trace are the smallest at 24 and 25 liters respectively. And then the Air Travel Pack 2 Small, Cotopaxi Alpa, and Cabin Zero Military Pack are all 28 liters. In order of weight, the Cabin Zero and the Patagonia are the lightest at about 1.9 pounds. The Evergood CPL 24 is 2.9 pounds, while the Air and the Cotopaxi are the heaviest at about 3.3 pounds. I chose these packs because they all use high quality materials. However, there are some major differences in the fabrics and the hardware. On the lower end of the spectrum, we have the Cabin Zero Military 28 and the Patagonia Trace 28. Both packs use a decent quality nylon fabric. There's a thousand denier nylon over here on the Cabin Zero. Well, the Patagonia uses a slightly thinner but lighter 630 denier nylon, and both these packs use a water resistant coating. Next, in terms of quality, we have the Travel Pack and the Cotopaxi Alpa, which uses half and half this 1000 denier polyester TPU coating and 840 ballistic nylon on the bottom. Well, this Air Travel Pack uses this beefy 1680 Cordura ballistic nylon. It's very strong and thick, but not as abrasion resistant as some thinner fabrics. My favorite fabric on these packs is the Evergood CPL24. It's a thinner 500 denier nylon, but it's a very good quality 6.6 air textured nylon with a water repellent finish. It has a very thin weave on this thing. It's a little bit rougher than the other packs, but it has very good abrasion resistance. For the zippers and hardware, they use YKK across the board. All of these packs have these larger number 10 zippers on the main compartment, except the Patagonia Trace up here, which uses a slightly smaller number eight. Only the Air Travel Pack and the Cabin Zero Military here have locking zippers, but the Alpa up here has these security loops which help deter opportunistic theft. It's the same thing for the hardware. All these packs use a high quality Duraflex buckles and adjusters. The Alpa and the Trace buckles are slightly smaller, but I wouldn't worry about the quality on any of these packs. Now looking at the outside of these packs, I chose bags with a variety of features. This Cabin Zero is the only one with external compression straps. Four of these packs have front pockets and two have top pockets. The Air and the Cabin Zero are the only bags with water bottle pockets and the Patagonia and the Elpa are the only ones with stowable backpack straps. Three of these bags have this briefcase style front compartment, Evergoods, Cabin Zero, and Patagonia, which lets you swing the bag around from the side while it's on your shoulder to get easy access to this front compartment. The Trace and the Cabin Zero pockets are both large. However, they don't have any kind of further interior organizational pockets. Well, the CPL pocket is slightly smaller, but has quite a few internal dividers and a little mesh pocket. 
The travel pack small has the air signature front slash pocket with this water resistant zipper. It's large, but there's no further interior pockets in here. The Cotopaxi Alpa just has this smooth plastic front, but they make up for a lack of a front pocket with this ginormous top access pocket that is close to the quarter of the volume on the entire pack. This pocket shares a volume with the interior packing cubes, which gives you versatility on where you want to store your gear on the inside of the bag or on the outside. The Travel Pack and the Evergood CPL also both have top pockets, but they're considerably smaller, normal size pockets for sunglasses and other small gear. And then the Patagonia Trace and the Cabin Zero don't have any small top slash pockets. Only two of these packs have a water bottle pocket on the outside, the Air and the Cabin Zero. This Air uses a zipper, keeps it flat, while the Cabin Zero has a little button. The Air one is large enough, it fits kind of a slim water bottle pretty easily. You can fit a liter in here, but it's really tight. This Cabin Zero one is pretty ridiculously small. I can't fit any of my water bottles in there, so it's really only good for maybe a travel umbrella or a tripod. All five of these bags have a laptop compartment, but the nicest ones are in the Travel Pack and the Evergood CPL, which has a side access. This thing has great padding and the sleeve with this Velcro strap to keep your laptop in place and away from the sides and the bottom of the pack. Air, on the other hand, is kind of a top side access pocket, also has great padding in the front and the back, as well as a sleeve here to keep your laptop away from the bottom and sides. Next in line are the Alpa and the Trace. They both have side pockets with decent padding, but they lack some features. The Alpa has this tiny little sleeve. It's about 11 and a half by eight and a half deep. This might fit a 13 inch laptop, but it's way too small for my 15 inch, which might force you to put your laptop in this large main part of the laptop compartment. It's well padded, but it's gonna shift around in here and it doesn't really have good top and side protection. Kind of the same deal for the trays. It has a nice pocket here. It's got decent foam padding, but there's no false bottom and nothing to keep your laptop from sliding around in here. And then finally, the Cabin Zero doesn't have a dedicated laptop compartment like the other bags. It just has this little sleeve in the main compartment. It does keep your laptop in the middle, keeps it from shifting around in here away from the sides and the bottom. It has padding on the back, but there's really no padding on the front. I would recommend using a padded laptop sleeve with this bag if you're gonna carry one. And then a quick note on the compression, the Cabin Zero is the only pack that has them. Two on each side. These things work great to squish your pack down to fit it in the personal item size bin. The Alpa and the Evergoods don't really need compression straps. They both have a sleek compact design with these gusseted corners up here that help hold your gear and reduce the need for compression straps. The Travel Pack Small is the only bag that doesn't have compression straps that I wish did. It's less than eight inches normally, but it's really soft and easy to overpack this thing. They included compression straps on this larger size 33 liter travel pack, but for some reason they don't have them on the smaller version. Now let's compare the carry system on these packs. They all obviously have backpack straps, well, the only ones that are stowable are on the Elpa and the Patagonia Trace. The Elpa is the only pack that comes with a hip belt, but the travel pack has an optional one you can attach to these loops. It's available on the website. My favorite carries on these bags are the Cabin Zero and the Air Travel Pack. They both do everything right as far as the features I look for in comfort. They both have wide shoulder straps with a good curve, thick padding with this softer, foam covered mesh on the back. The back padding is thick and comfortable with good air ventilation. They have easy to adjust straps, sternum strap, and the Cabin Zero has these top load adjusters. The CPL and the Elpa are next in line. They both have a solid carry system, but with some room for improvement. The CPL straps are well padded with this soft, squishy foam. These straps fit me really well, and it's a very comfortable pack to carry. However, they use the same 500 denier nylon throughout the pack, and they don't have any kind of mesh padding on the back of the bag or the back of the shoulder straps. The Alpa straps are good. They chose to go with a wider but a thinner strap. They're still comfortable and easy to adjust, but I wish they had used something more padded on the back of the shoulder straps. 
Patagonia doesn't do a bad job. The straps are stowable in this top pocket. They have good adjustability, but these shoulder straps are quite a bit thinner and stiffer, and there's not as much padding on the straps and the back as I would like to see. Look at inside the packs now. If you remember, I chose these bags because they all have large main compartments that open like a suitcase to make packing simple. If you wanna see me pack these bags all with gear, I'm gonna do that in a separate video. This one's getting kind of long. I'll pack them all with the same gear so you can see how much they hold, how to pack them, and then I'll test them against the 18 by 14 by eight box to make sure they fit. Four of these bags open from the top at a panel style access. The Evergoods, Patagonia, and Air Travel Pack. These lids all fold down completely, giving you access to the entire main compartment. Cabin Zero also folds from the top, giving you access to a large main compartment, but the zipper only goes down about three quarters the length of the pack. The Cotopaxi Alpa also lays flat, but it opens from the side in a clamshell style design opens to two equally sided compartments with little zippers, giving you some built-in packing cubes. The packing style on these top open ones is all pretty similar. Large compartment here to pack most of your clothes and gear. These three bags have a little sleeve back here for putting a tablet, laptop, or notebook. All four bags have pockets in the lid. Patagonia over here, two pockets, mesh sleeve, two pockets over here. They're both thin and don't have their own volume, so they're good for smaller gear. The pockets in the air travel pack are slightly larger. They have a little bit of their own volume. They're still pretty flat, but these are large enough that you can use them as packing cubes for things like socks and underwear. And then the top pockets on the Evergood are the best. These have their own volume, so you can use these as packing cubes. This large one will hold a ton of gear, clothes, large bulky items. And then this smaller pocket up here is good for some small organizational stuff. So to wrap this up, I think these are five decent travel backpacks for personal item carry. They're all from name brands that make good packs, high quality materials, kind of range of prices between about $70 to almost $250 for the CPL. I chose these bags to maximize space when doing personal item travel so you can carry a bag just under the seat on an airplane. These are a little bit large though. However, I've tested them all in the box and as long as you don't overpack them, they will fit in the smaller 18 by 14 by eight personal item size box. And I think there's something here for everyone. If you want something that's just minimalist, small, lightweight bag, not a whole lot of bells and whistles, Patagonia is a great bag, has a large main compartment, decent backpack straps, but doesn't break the bank on price. This Cabin Zero is a great option, has high quality materials, doesn't really have a laptop compartment, but that's good if you don't need one, and really comfortable backpack straps. The Air is a great, just solid, minimalist pack, high quality, durable materials and hardware, large interior compartment, and good organization and great backpack straps. The Evergoods and the Alpa are two of my favorites. Alpa is just a great all around pack, has really great interior organization. You can fit a lot more in this pack than you think you would. Same thing with the Evergoods. It's only a 24 liter pack. Interior compartment looks small, but you can pack it out quite nicely. And this thing is kind of the Cadillac of travel backpacks. It's a little bit pricier, but not gonna find a better travel pack than this as far as terms of quality hardware. I hope you love this review and five great personal item travel packs. If you have any suggestions on bags that fit my criteria, I'd love to hear suggestions in the comments below. And stick around next week, I'll be doing a packing demo, comparing packing style on all five of these bags with the same gear. So again, subscribe to the channel. Hope you liked this review and thanks for watching.